On Tuesday this week, after the day after the president of Uganda, President Jowika Kagutam seven passed the anti-homosexuality law, there was a show on KFM Hot Seat hosted by Patrick Kamara. During this show, the subject was the likely ramifications of the anti-homosexuality law. A lot was discussed, but I want to invite you to the century remarks of Dr. Pastor Martin Sempa, who discussed uh, after people like Dr. Daniel Chewainze, the Director of Public Health for Minister of Health, discussed. And then we had Honorable Martin Mugara Bahinduka, the Minister of State for Tourism, discussed. And then Patrick Okailap, Deputy Permanent Secretary of Ministry of Finance, Planning and Economic Development. In this video, you're going to hear what Pastor Dr. Sempa did because he brought down the house on uh, the national media group challenging their biased policy on covering homosexuality stories here for yourself. I am well. I know you've been a big proponent in the fight against homosexuality in Uganda and finally the president has signed this into law. That must have come as sweet music in your ears, wasn't it? Absolutely. I appreciate the fact that uh, the president has the courage to sign the bill. Not only that, but the Speaker of Parliament, Honorable Anita Monk, as well as the Member of Parliament, uh, Asan Basariwa, who has become like Joshua since uh, David Bahati's bill. And Bahati was like the Moses. This is our Joshua moment of uh, entering the land. But this Joshua moment is coming with huge ramifications for Uganda, isn't it? Absolutely. I believe that uh, Uganda is uh, showing the courage of challenging the Goliath. We are dealing with the LGBT. Goliath is a dragon with many heads. The dragon that has economic powers, the dragon with cultural powers, the dragon with digital, geopolitical powers, and so to take our children, it doesn't come easy. But you know, if you want to get a great victory, don't fight small battles. Fight the big ones. So Uganda has taken on this giant and leading Africa in a tremendous challenge of this queer theory, which is really insanity. It's madness. So uh, we are challenging the status quo where they think boys can, can be girls and girls can be boys. We're totally rejecting the whole idea of queer theory and we're saying this is a failed theory. It has outlived its usefulness. We have seen its decline and impact on the West, both in terms of business, quality of life, and we are putting it and burning it by the roots and we're taking back the rainbow and we're saying no, the rainbow is a symbol of God. Furthermore, it is a mental sickness. And it doesn't have any place in civilized society. That's what we are moving towards. But you're talking about it being uh, the people pro homosexuality being the Goliath. When we look at the numbers, you actually, those who are against you are the Goliath. They are a minority, aren't they? Absolutely not. If you line up uh, Barack Obama, David Cameron, you line up the president of America, Joe Biden, you line up uh, the Canadian minister, all these are all designed on one thing, to push further in Africa. And Africa is very small. I mean, Uganda is a very small economy. Imagine uh, just one program of America, that is uh, USA, it's $26 billion. It's committed to one issue, homosexuality. Barack Obama in 2012, he passed an executive order directing all agencies of American government to put as number one priority the export of LGBT worldwide, but add on all the other agencies of state of America. You're not talking about Secretary of Commerce, the CIA, the FBI, the American Chambers of Commerce, the Foreign Affairs. We're talking about a huge giant that is pushing down this sort of thing on Africa. And uh, so it is indeed our moment of David versus Goliath. It is a moment. Look at all the media in the world. Even in the United States, this issue is not is not settled. You know, you also have uh, for your friends in the Bible Belt who could, could be supporting you, the conservatives, uh, the evangelicals in America. They too have not yet accepted it. So you cannot say that it's such a, such a giant. In fact, if you had maybe the Republicans in the in office right now, it could have been a different story. 
Well, that's absolutely wrong. You know, the narrative was that the Bible Belt was funding African resistance. That is nothing but the false lies. If you have the address, I'd like to write to them because I'd like to get some money to be able to set up a rehabilitation center. But there is not. However, look who is heading our campaign. It's Atsumani Vatsarirwa. He's a Muslim. For you to say that uh, the Bible Belt is funding a Muslim to run the campaign in Uganda is laughable. So the entire description of deception that has been coming up, this uh, uh, deception of Sylvia Tamale and all these uh, American Hollywood deceivers, it's not going to work. And I'm so glad to be alive. These are the things you need to know. Homosexual spread in South Africa on January 7th to 14th, 2004, and mapped out a Berlin conference of how to take over Africa. They divided East, West, and South, and they've been implementing for 20 years. But after 20 years of infiltration, support by the West, Africa is rising again. It's like, no, we may be late to the moment, but we are saying, no, we will not allow our children to become sodomites. So, I think the next step is to have a constitutional amendment that sets out clearly where we stand, so that there will be no nonsense of Sylvia Tamale going to court and this and that. And I have confidence that Honorable Anita Among is going to be moving a constitutional amendment to put clearly in our constitution that not only homosexuals are outlawed, but the promotion, the practice, the engagement of the same, the education of queer theory is illegal. Sadly, we also need a smart minister of marriage and family. I've written to the president that we need a cabinet minister of marriage and family. The reason why we have not been able to put this on the radar is because who handles marriage and family? There's no real minister handling it. Are you not actually even splitting hairs here? Why should even we be having a minister of marriage and family? Uh, for what? Why would that even be an issue? And even if you had a ministry of marriage and family, would that mean it would stop gender-based violence? Would it stop people uh, adultery? Would it, how would that be of an effect? Most people think homosexuality is some few individuals here and there who have a funny plan. But these are well organized, like Berlin Conference. The way you are talking, it's as if an African in 1885 or 1890 is being told that Europeans are sitting in Berlin with King Leopold to patch out Africa, and the Africans are like, ah, no, that is nothing wrong. No, they can never take us. These guys are very organized. They are putting all in their documents. And they are saying to be a good person, a good Negro, a good journalist, you need to do this. Matter of fact, even in the records of the nation media under which you are broadcasting this, in Nairobi, they have put a policy of bias that they will promote homosexuality as minorities, which is why you are using this language, but it's alien to us. And we want to have a policy review. The nation media needs a policy review, just as the new vision needs a policy audit so that we do not promote homosexuality, we promote the straight nation panel. In the editorial guidelines that I have seen, I have editorial independence and freedom. Not even my immediate supervisor can tell me how to tweak the questions, ask them, or how to, you know, hound people with another an agenda. That I absolutely say no. If you have seen it in the corridors of power, somewhere in Nairobi, that's a different story. But me, as we speak right now, I have editorial freedom to speak what I think is right. And if I get it wrong, it's me who has gotten it wrong. I do know that uh, your station is part of the Nation Media Group. 2007, I wrote to the Yaga Khan when we first started out with a young student from Stanford who was on that radio station. I think her name was Catherine Rubos. And uh, from that moment, I've kept a keen eye on the policies of uh, Nation Media. And I'll be happy to discuss with you at some point, although I don't need to go in there. And I appreciate your desire to be independent. I well, know, by the way, you are one thing, media, uh, Patrick, you why do you call this years bill? Ago, you, Pastor Martin Semper, you are doing a radio show called uh, Talk of the Nation, right here, and I'm sure nobody was telling you to ask questions in a certain way. If you did, I I'm not sure if somebody asked you to do a show in a certain way, because you were on this, on this radio show, you were on this microphone where I'm seated, doing a show called Talk of the Nation. Well, that's true, and I think that you would then know that I'm not just a pedestrian. However, I will give you one evidence to show a policy difference. 
Whenever the nation writes about this bill, they call it the anti-gay bill. Whenever other, the parliament talks about it, called it the anti-homosexuality bill. It shows an ideological difference. If someone calls sodomy as gay, it means that those people are born that way. But if you call it homosexuality, it means it's a set of actions that can be regulated. Why do you, the nation group, keep calling this law by anti-gay? Its real name is anti-homosexuality. You are biased. You are calling the bill by a wrong name. You gotta stop it. I think those are just semantics. Now, what happens? No, no, that's the root of it. Uh, court, uh, you, call, you see, what definitions is, are important. Law. Kamara, definitions are important. Why do you mis mis misname this law? The law is anti-homosexuality. But whenever you print in the nation media, the monitor, you always call it the anti-gay. It's not. I am talking to you right now, and I am calling it anti-homosexuality. You have a problem with that? And I work I with know, media. But look at the newspaper. All the headlines you write is anti-gay. You gotta change that. Call it by its right name. You are here on on KFM, and I'm broadcasting a show, and I'm calling it anti-homosexuality. Can you move on? Because we are also part. Of Nation Media Group, and uh, I will be saying so. I appreciate your independence. Please go ahead. Sexuality. Happy now? Yeah. But we do need you to come on board and also do a policy review. We need an audit. We need an audit of all the 20 years of infiltration. The police has not been arresting people who are homosexual criminals. They have been released. I'm writing to Uganda Communications Commission. We cannot allow. This bias of policy of shutting us down. My Facebook was shut down. We've been persecuted, and it's time to stop it. And Africa is saying, with this bill, we are like, no, we won't take it anymore. What's going to be your parting shot? Our campaign is now called to be Gore. I want her to shut down the city. Tomorrow, good willing, I've written to the police. I want to have a massive nationwide march to gather at uh, parliament. We want to show support to the parliament. And then Saturday, we're going to go to the Uganda Matters Day. We want to gather and have a million men match. And we are saying, Tubigane, eh, Siaga, Tubigane, Alogalo, Get Tubigane, eh, Sodoma, Tubigane, Alogalo, Get the hashtag is Tubigane. We All have right. reduced. Thank you so much for giving us your time. Uh, join us, join us. Why are you now leaving me here? Bring me back. <laughs> Good night and God bless you, Uganda. <laughs>